We're on YouTube, it's Channel King King Nazru, here with a review for Rosario Vampire 2, the epilogue. A mysterious person hires Mocha Akashida, uh, uh, Akashida's father, uh, Isaac Shuzen, for an assassination mission involving Skune. A really interesting uh, way to start the uh, chapter because we both know that, I mean, not both know, we all know that there, uh, that Isaac Shusen is part of the is an hired is an expert assassin, and his entire family is a all trained assassin. The that's how they pretty much made their profession and wealth and reputation. So this also brings into the uh, dilemma: if Isaac Shusen does cross Skune, does does this mean that he's planning to kill him on the spot, or get to know him before doing so, since he, uh, he he's dating her, dating his daughter? Uh, it should also be noted that with uh, Dracula and and uh, Isa's mistress Akasha Bloodriver gone, Isa is now one of, if not the strongest vampire in existence. Isa thinks the work is run, but he ultimately agrees to do it. We then see that Skune is in his third year at Yokai Academy, which uh, is taking place ten months after the defeat of Dracula. We also see the... No, no, I, I don't have time for that joke. Uh, we also see that uh, what happened in the aftermath in the human world. With monsters being uh, officially known to exist in the, by human eyes, and with their first introduction to monsters being Dracula destroying several cities in Japan, yeah, they're not too fond of the whole co the idea of trying to have them coexist. It's pretty much the X Men dilemma with them. Uh, Skune uh, is, greet, is greeted by uh, Mocha, who is now acting more like the outer Mocha than the inner Mocha. And Skune is ha uh, happy Mocha is now a hybrid of her two personalities, but is still annoyed with her constantly sucking his blood, saying it's delicious even as a vampire. Uh, Mocha, you do realize that's basically cannibalism. Just saying. Uh, we then cut to uh, Kirby and Beezer and Yukri complaining uh, that Mocha didn't keep her promise of only sucking blood once a month, so they try to compromise, but fail to do so, and Yukri makes a joke that it's basically a comparison of them trying to negotiate when to have sex with Skune. <laughs> uh, I agree with you, Yukri. Which leads them to them fighting, although Yukri probably wants to more, be more of a playful cuddle with Mocha being bisexual. Uh, but Mocha ends up beating them in a fight, as expected. Mocha then uh, lets Skune uh, know that her father is coming and that they sh and he wants to meet them. So they uh, head off to the graveyard to meet, greet him because as i said before, pretty much everything happens at the graveyard in Rosario Vampire. Um, Skinny uh, is unable to tell if Isaac Shusen will be the typical overprotective father or will be nice and understanding. And at yeah, first he seems nice and understanding, but when Skinny greets him as father, Isaac uh, gets a little peeved by that notion. And it turns out that Isaac is an overprotective father. Uh, we then cut to Cocoa letting the newspaper club know uh, her father is meeting Skune. And uh, during the fairy tale and Dracula incident, uh, Isa was imprisoned by his uh, wife, Gyokuro Shuzen, during a coup d'etat. And uh, has been going everywhere trying to rebuild uh, the Shuzen family and reputation. Uh, since the aftermath. Yukri uh, suspects that Mocha and Skinny are getting engaged and that's why Isaac Shusen is uh, 
confronting them about it. And most of them decide that they need to stop, uh, to stop him from approving the engagement. Uh, Coco says, despite Isaac's gentle and permissive appearance, he is overprotective of his daughters and will most likely kill Skune if he makes one false move. And Isa is said to be on par with Akasha and the other two Dark Lords, and probably would have been considered one had he been one of the people who originally defeated Dracula back 200 years ago. And Kurumu and Mizuri, uh forced Yukari to come up with an idea to stop the engagement. We then cut to Skune, Mocha, and Aiza having a meal together, with Skune being uneasy about possibly upsetting Aiza. Uh, Aiza knows Skune used to be human, but gets upset when he thinks that Skune isn't grateful for being a vampire now, and when he mentions that he just uh, has a, he feels more human than vampire, and it's just not really easy to it, and uh, the whole, especially with the whole dilemma of the monsters and humans trying to uh, try to come to terms with uh, try to come in terms with one another, and Isaac gets a little pissed off because he thinks that Skune uh, doesn't think vampires are doing a good job of trying to make make it happen sooner. But Mocha vouches uh, vouches for him and says that uh, he would make a, a good lover for her should they go that route. Isaac then knows Skune is close to the other girls and wants to know how he feels about them. And, like an awkward answer, Kurumu comes in half-naked and says that Skinny promised to love her. I mean, to make love to her. Making Aiza think that Kurumu is Skinny's mistress. I'm surprised that Aikida, Aikihiza didn't come up with another uh, Kurumu ass shot. We could have had one last send-off for that joke uh, for the final chapter. Oh well. Uh, Misery, uh comes in saying <coughs> uh, Skune promised to make babies with her, making Aiza even more upset because now he believes uh, he's trying to get all the girls pregnant. Then it gets weird with Yukri and Fong Fong arriving saying they're his lowly member and boy lover of his harem. I'm confused by this because the whole Fong Fong gay thing that was originally established that that was just a misunderstanding and he wasn't actually gay. But now we're, now they bring this up and now I'm really confused. Is, is Fong really gay? Huh. Um, uh, however, uh, Kurumu delights in her aptly named Skune negative campaign plan where they plan to ruin Skune's reputation uh, in front of Aiza, and uh, thus he won't be won't approve of the of any relationship with Mocha. And Aiza feels that he has his answer of what kind of person Skuni is. But things are not made any better when Ruby arrives in a sex slave outfit. Fortunately, Ruby is more focused as usual and informs everyone that Skune is being targeted by assassins hired by Fairy Tail which is now run by Kiria, uh, Hokuto, and uh, Kuyo. Ruby uh, finds the wanted poster that belongs to Isa Shuzen, and uh, it's going to ask what does Isa do for a living, and he says that he's an assassin. What about it? And everyone thinks that Isa has come to kill Skune, and they get ready to confront each other. Uh, however, Aiza uh, was actually trying to save Skune from a poison monster, which looks like a deformed centipede with a stinger. At this point, something like that does not uh, disturb or surprise me in any fashion. I've seen too many weird stuff in Rosario Vampire. And then we are greeted by Bus Driver, who arrives saying he, he was the one that hired Aiza to protect Skune and gives and give him the Shuzen family support to mitigate uh, the attacks of the assassins. Uh, and the, here comes the shocking part. 
Isaac Susan refers to bus driver as the Nurari, which translates to Supreme Commander of All Monsters. So, bus driver is the king of all monsters? Godzilla's gonna have a fit. <laughs> ah, there's my last Godzilla joke for this series. Uh, and bus driver said that Isa will now be the one training Skinny so he can prepare for what Fairy Tail has in store for him. Uh, we then see that Mocha hears from Skune that Isa trained him, but if but Isa obliterate him in 30 seconds. Though Mocha notes that 30 seconds against someone like Isa Susan is no small feat. And we go cut back to when he was training him, and Isa thanks Skune and his friends for stopping his estranged wife, Giyakuro Shuzen. And he offers some advice, like, uh, wanting him not to be a polygamist like he was, I mean, he is, as it led to trouble, such as uh, the deaths of both his wives, um, Dracula being revived, that, that whole fairy tale nonsense, so, yada. You get the picture. It, it's not good. It's bad. Okay? Look at me, it's bad. Anyway, I just said, also said the outer mocha didn't leave fully with Akasha. And this proves not to be the case because we can see little uh, pink tips on the bit of mocha's silver hair. Uh, so uh, this is, explains why the mocha is starting to act a little bit more like the outer mocha, which was also just a clone of uh, Akasha's personality. Then the chapter ends off with the newspaper club hanging out with Mocha tricking her way to sucking Skune's blood and the others getting ready to confront her. Uh, so that was the final chapter of Rosario Vampire 2. All in all, good stuff. Like I said, it was probably going to end, uh, end off open-ended like how Busaga ended. And pretty much just start up with everybody's imagination. So, we'll indulge you, I could do like either, and continue the adventures in our mind. See you guys.